Welcome back. As we said before the break, a modular construction firm won the contract for the UCHA project. On July 23, 2010, we toured Design Homes in Bloomsburg to see the progress on the duplex construction. When we arrived, the houses were on their fifth day of work and drywall was already installed in what would be the first floor of one side of the duplex. There are distinct advantages to using modular construction. Your building durability issues can increase right off the start because your, your stuff's not getting rained on every third day. Mm -hmm. um, uh, your, your time to completion, you know, speeds up markedly, yeah. <laughs> you know, in, in most cases anyway. Um, your, uh, your efficiencies, your material use efficiencies, um, your labor use efficiencies all go up. Um, uh, you're not stymied by really cold or really hot weather where the guys just can't work as hard as they normally could because they're in a more controlled environment. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you're, able to, um, you're able to conserve a lot more and to recycle a lot more waste. Additionally, the timeline from start to finish is significantly diminished. Construction began on July 19th, and the house was set on its pre-poured foundation on August 10th. That is less than four weeks. In order to obtain the goal of a HERS index of 50 or better, quality control was of the utmost importance. The controlled environment at Design Homes made it easy for team members to verify that project specifications were being met. Let's look at all of the technology that went into creating these highly efficient homes. One particularly unique aspect of the duplex design is the use of SIPs, or structurally insulated panels. Bruce Quigley and Lisa Ayulo explain the benefits of these wall panels. The reason they were chosen is that the house is on, there's two houses on a very narrow lot. We only have 15 feet available per house to build. So it was critical that the walls be uh, very thin. Um, and that's made it a, a, a difficult challenge because the easiest way to get great thermal performance is to make a thick wall. The other thing we like is that it's really simple. Um, it's got these studs every 24 inches, so your siding can go right on one side. No sheathing, no vapor barrier, the wall is the vapor barrier. And on the inside, your drywall goes right on the, the wall. The panels are made of EPS foam, expanded polystyrene. They were manufactured by Thermosteel to specification and shipped to design homes where they were installed. The SIPs were such a key component to the energy efficiency of the houses that Peter Vargo commented on them when we talked about the specific technologies that went into the duplex. In the house in Lewisburg, we have five and a half inches of EPS foam, which is about an R22, and it's continuous the whole way around. We don't have any thermal bridging through there. We have a little bit at the top and bottom plates, but through the wall itself, we've eliminated it. Insulating the rest of the house was vital to achieving energy efficiency. We put um, R10 rigid board insulation, like the blue or the pink board you see, that was under the complete slab. Um, we used the Superior Wall XI um, R12.5 foundation, but then we added additional ins rigid board insulation to that uh, to beef that up to, uh, it ended up being like an R22 and a half, R23 in the basement walls. Sprayed. I can't remember exactly the depth, I think it was around three or four inches of um, closed cell foam. We sprayed over the whole entire surface of the attic floor, okay? And then on top of that we added um, oh, somewhere around 15 inches of cellulose, blown cellulose loose fill insulation on top of that, which brought our R value of our attic assembly up to about a 70, maybe a little bit more. The choice of windows is another place where energy efficiency comes into play. Windows serve a bunch of purposes in a house. Ventilation, natural lighting, and of course we, we want the best ones that, you know, that are affordable um, because they're, very, they're glass, they're weak points in the thermal envelope, but we need them there. Um, so what we did <clears throat> in the case of the duplex project, we used triple pane windows. <clears throat> we didn't use super expensive triple pane windows, we used a, a locally produced <clears throat> you know, builder grade window um, triple pane window, which for the money was hard to beat. Windows are given a U value and, like the HERS index, a lower number means it is more energy efficient. In our climate, Energy Star rated windows have a U value of 0.32. The windows at the duplex have a U value of 0.19. The lighting scheme in the houses, 
features compact fluorescent and LED fixtures, which each use less energy and put out much less heat than standard incandescent bulbs. Standard HVAC systems are not only expensive, but they can also affect a home's energy efficiency. Because our house was built so efficiently, our heating loads, so the amount of heat that we need to keep warm in the coldest times of the winter, were greatly reduced compared to an average home. You know, a half to a third, you know, less than an average home. So, so we didn't need this big clunker, you know, HVAC system sitting down in the basement, you know, to heat this house. So, and, and we didn't need to spend $10,000 on the heating system, like which is a normal ticket for a new home for a, just a generic ducted heating system. We ended up using what's called a mini split um, ductless he heating system. It's a single source system which is connected to an outdoor unit, the outdoor compressor unit, which generates heat or cool depending on what mode it's in. Um, and what we're, what we're doing in the house is relying on natural convection to distribute that heat and or cooling effect throughout the house. The mini split system uses air to air inverter heat pump technology. This makes the unit twice as efficient as a typical heat pump at colder temperatures. A typical heat pump system, the heat pump virtually shuts off for all practical purposes at 32 degrees and it switches over to an all electric coil oh, okay. inside, the, inside the blower, right outside the blower unit. Mm -hmm. um, so anytime it's under 32 degrees, you're using 100% electrical backup, which has an efficiency of one COP basically, coefficient of performance. So for every, for every watt going into it, you're getting one watt of heat out of it. With a high performance thermal envelope like the one at the UCHA duplex, there is very little natural air leakage. Therefore, it becomes necessary to have a mechanical ventilation system to maintain indoor air quality. A heat recovery ventilator, or HRV, was installed to regulate the air exchange. We use an HRV, which is a balanced ventilation system. So we have little four inch ducting running down in the basement with supplies and returns. So we're, we're bringing outside air in right into, into that white box mm -hmm. at the same time we're exhausting air out mm -hmm. it's actually going through a heat exchange process where it's kind of crossing in a, in a in a heat exchanger mm -hmm. so so what we're doing instead of just blowing out our heated air and sucking in really cold air mm -hmm. we're actually we're actually exchanging those two air paths through a heat exchanger and we're and and the outgoing heated air um, is heating up the heat exchanger the incoming cold air is going through that heat exchanger, recovering up to 50% of that heat that, from the outgoing stream and bringing it back into the house. We should also mention that the HRV has a filter system built into it to remove air contaminants. All of the appliances in the houses are Energy Star certified. That includes the water heater, which actually uses heat pump technology to heat the water by extracting heat from the air. We've talked a lot about the energy efficiency aspect of the project, but as Jerry Engel told us at the beginning, one goal was to use green technology in the duplex construction. The term green has been bandied about and has come to mean many different things. In this particular case, the goal was to focus on conservation, employ sustainable building methods, and use products that are environmentally friendly. Our paint, our paint and our uh, trim stain were both um, water-based with no, no VOCs. We used a locally um, harvested pine flooring and trim. For the kitchen countertops, um, we sourced a, what's called paper stone, um, which is just recycled paper that's laminated together and put under extreme pressure and heat to form like a block of paper. <laughs> the foundation walls were installed by Superior Walls from Middleburg. Their unique process uses much fewer resources than standard poured walls, which can be 8 to 10 inches thick. Their structure is more in their, um, uh, their concrete rebar and force studding. And that outer inch or inch and a quarter, inch and a half concrete skin is like a 5,000 PSI concrete that's more there for holding back the earth and, and water. We used um, low flow faucets and shower heads and, and, um, and toilet. Um, which are really at this point no-brainers, um, especially when you're somewhere where you're, where you're not on a well, you're paying for your water, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so water conservation is, should be even, in my opinion, should be 
have more focus than it really does. Even the modular building process focused on conservation. In a modular setting, it's like, like the one that built this one, mm -hmm. um, and most of them do, they have, they have the bins right there, you know, right on the side of the line, and the drywall goes in this one, the metal and the wire goes in this one, you know, the, uh, the wood goes in this one, and that all gets reused. To control water runoff on the site, rain gardens will be planted to capture rainwater and filter it back into the ground. When it was all said and done, the duplex received a HERS rating of 49 and at a cost of $108 per square foot. The project has been submitted for a variety of industry awards and is also being featured in a technical paper presented by Lisa Aiulo. Later this month, each house in the duplex will be put up for sale by the UCHA to income qualified people who are 55 or older. Jerry Engel's vision goes far beyond just this duplex in Lewisburg. He sees it as a model for future development. In order to do that, he wants to share this project with as many people as possible. We took the philosophy that we're going to learn a lot, but to maximize the expenditure of the public dollars, we wanted to share our story with others. And I know when I was first learning about energy efficient housing, I did a lot of work on the internet and found there were some case studies that described step by step the major considerations they needed to make in building their houses. We want to give back and do that as well. A lot of developers and builders are kind of hesitant to get involved in a big way into green or energy efficient housing. So we thought we could pioneer the way and maybe, you know, learn some lessons that we can uh, relate to them as well, that maybe this would be a catalyst to try and encourage them to build energy efficient uh, green type green type housing. Gathering data about the home's efficiency is part of UCHA's larger plan. We do have energy monitoring equipment that's installed in this house and we are going to undertake a five-year study just to see how energy efficient this house really is. Uh, we did computer modeling that says it should operate this way. Now we're going to do the monitoring to find out how it exactly does work. The monitoring will be conducted by Penn State University and will measure the ongoing energy usage of the homes. Penn State University is very much involved uh, with this house, uh, not so much with the development of it, but more so uh, in understanding how this house works. And they're doing some technical papers on this and also some presentation of papers in their, in their uh, academic uh, uh, realm of influence. Engel hopes that the data will be helpful to the housing industry. Whether it's, it's the banking industry, the real estate industry, the developers, the contractors, to become more conscious about the types of houses we're building and to meet some of our, nat our national objectives of uh, becoming less dependent on foreign sources for uh, our energy. Other communities looking to build responsibly, manage growth, and provide quality housing for lower income families can take the model developed by the UCHA and run with it. Uh, any community that has uh, long narrow lots like ours could take this house and put it in and rather than have a vacant lot which is a blighting influence on property values in the neighborhood, they could put a highly energy efficient house in there that would be well suited for couples, um, especially people age 55 and older. The goals set for this project were audacious to say the least. Highly energy efficient and affordable seem to be contradictory concepts but the Union County Housing Authority has brought these two ideas together in their duplex project. For more information, you can visit www.UnionCountyHousingAuthority.org. That wraps up this edition of In Your Neighborhood. Be sure to check us out on Facebook and now online at www.CCNNews8.com. I'm your host, Jennifer Wakeman. Thanks for watching.
Memories are priceless. Preserve yours today by transferring those old tapes and film to a timeless DVD. Take a step back in time and know that your memories will last forever. DVD transfers make a great gift for mom or dad or just as that family keepsake. Contact CCN today at 275-8881 and relive those happy days once again.